Hey guys, what's up? Ty with Cincy Diesel Repair. I just wanted to make a quick video uh, working on this 2011 6.7, the white truck from some of the previous videos. Um, I just got the cylinder head set back down in here. I was going to film it, but I don't have a GoPro or a tripod or anything. Um, need more money for that. So... I don't really know how you make money off these videos. I've never researched it that much. I just do this to show people how to fix stuff. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to show you. I've had some questions. A lot of people uh, outside of YouTube have asked me about the six sevens and the heads because you know it's pretty uh, pretty well known that it's it can be very difficult to get the heads off of a six zero six four. A lot of people think you have to. <coughs> there it is. A lot of things, people think you have to remove the cab on a 6.0 or 6.4. That's not true. You can get them off without pulling the cab. Um, actually, if you look at the Ford uh, service literature on a 6.0 and 6.4 uh, for a head removal, it nowhere in there um, d tells you to pull the cab. It has it, Nowhere in there does it say anything about the cab. Uh, but I'll admit pulling the cab on some of this stuff is a lot easier gives you tons of room to get around the whole engine bay you know check out the harness better and everything but if you're like me and do a lot of field work and stuff here at the house you don't have a lift you know sometimes you just don't you, you don't have that luxury and that's one thing you know I, I was a field mechanic for a while and uh, I loved it you know I had a nice crane truck serves body with a crane on it and I need to get another one I love my my ambulance but having that crane is helpful but anyway when you're a field mechanic you learn to do stuff you know that uh, mechanics who work in a shop every day don't not to say that uh, field mechanics are better but you definitely learn how to fix stuff and really use your mind and um, you know, make it work anyway that didn't mean to get off subject let me turn this around and show you how much room at least on the passenger side I don't have the driver's side off right now but let me show you how much room is in here to get these heads off these 6.7s okay so the only thing out is the wheel well uh, wheel well liner and the turbo and obviously upper and lower intakes exhaust manifolds but that you know obviously you're gonna have to take all that out to get the uh, head off and then the wiring harness and all that the hoses I've got pulled back with a bungee cord here to get it out of the way and I literally just sat this head in here and I mean you don't even have to strain that heads I don't know the exact weight of it I'm gonna guess uh, lifting it up into this truck uh, I set it on this foam pad and then got up here and set it down in the engine bay I'm gonna guess 30 pounds 35 pounds but they're super light for as big as they are but look at all the room I mean there's tons of room back here to get this thing in there's tons of room on both sides tons of room to torque the bolts so yeah so anyway on this truck kind of an update I wasn't gonna film too much of this um, but I went through, checked all the uh, lifters, uh, put used ones up here in cylinder one because that's what he wanted. We're putting all used valve train in it. Um, the camshaft looked actually pretty good, even though it, that one roller lifter up here tore, you know, tore the hell out of that wheel. But uh, I bore scoped down in there. I mean, you can see quite a bit just looking down with a flashlight. But I sent a bore scope down there, and uh, it the cam looked you know it looked good obviously there's no way to know without pulling the camshaft out and literally checking it with a mic or really looking at it but he wasn't going to do that just not going to happen so you know if it was me um i would have put a camshaft in this thing definitely definitely would have pulled all this you know pulled the front clip and pulled the cam out definitely would have put a camshaft in it and like I said, I'm not real worried about putting the used uh, lifters. Uh, I would have gone with new push rods 
or the uh, putting used uh, rocker assemblies in there. You know, I inspect them. They look good. You know, these trucks are getting older. It's a 2011 truck. Um, I'd prefer to put all new stuff in there, but sometimes that's not always in people's budget. I understand that. So anyhow, yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna put the head studs in, get them torqued down. Um, those exhaust bolt exhaust. I turned English for a minute. Those exhaust bolts right there were broke off um, when I took it apart. I mean, they they must have snapped and just fell off. So we got those out. Uh, these came out of the head uh, when I pulled the exhaust manifold. But anyway, I got new studs for those. Got it all cleaned up. Um, you know, if you're doing field work like this, the biggest thing is keep keep what you're doing clean. Uh, you know, I got rags stuffed in place. Is here. I got underneath this pile of rags. I got rags where the turbo lays. It's not easy, but you got to keep stuff clean if you're going to do it outside of a shop. So anyway, I'm going to torque the head down, um, and then I'll actually put shrink wrap over top this head. And then, like I said in the other video, this this truck's got a number uh, eight. Yep, number eight. Uh, dead skip also and I'm I'm hoping it's not a lifter I'm hoping it's the rocker assembly is bad but we got to pull all this out and pull the intake slash valve cover off this side and see why number eight's messed up and check all our other rocker assemblies push rods on this side I, I really hope I don't have to pull the head on this side just because uh, this truck's been here long enough him trying to make the decisions. Well, not necessarily that it's just um, You know this truck's got to make a profit for him. I understand that or at least break even Or take a small loss just you know, so I understand he's running a business We're trying to fix it to the best quality we can without uh, Costing him tons and tons of money. That's tricky part about working for dealerships is uh, you got to understand they're there to make money but I'm also not going to send out a truck that I think's junk and we have a pretty good understanding uh, the dealerships that I work with that um, you know a truck like this I'm not comfortable for this truck to go uh, out there on his lot for thirty thirty thousand dollars because I didn't pull that camshaft. I'm just not comfortable with it. I, I don't, you know, I understand he's got to do what he's got to do. So uh, we kind of have an understanding with dealers I work with that this truck needs to go back to the auction and uh, somebody else, you know, it, it sucks, but somebody else is going to have to deal with this. But I'm not going to put my name on it and have it sit down at the dealership 10 miles down the road and have somebody buy it and say well you you fixed this thing for him and now they find out the camshaft's messed up um, so you know if I work for a dealer and I tell them this thing's not not good to go out on their lot for sale and you just go back to the auction they they pretty much uh, they'll pretty much follow what I say because I'm pretty clear that if I go by and see this sitting out front for sale, that we'll never do business again. And I'll make it known that this is not a good truck or that the repairs were not done the way I feel. Like I said, I inspected it from the outside the best I can for this camshaft. But, you know, I'm just not, I'm not comfortable without... If you want to keep the camshaft, it needs to come out. We need to check it. We need to mic it. And by the time you do all that, you can just buy another camshaft. So if you don't have the budget and it's going to wind up costing you a whole bunch of money and hardship, I understand. But don't sell it to somebody around here. Um, I know it goes back to the auction and somebody else winds up with it. And I, I get it. That sucks. I don't like it, but, you know, I'm running a business too, and I can't I can't put a camshaft in this thing for free. I just can't. I got too many things sitting around. I, I can't give away parts and give away labor. That's not how a business works, but 
anyway enough of a rant i'm gonna get back to it i'm gonna try to get this head torqued tonight and uh Mm, I'll probably, like I said, I'll probably leave it like that. Put shrink wrap over this and start tearing this side apart since we have all this room right now. Then get this side fixed, get this side back. I think the easiest way is to get this side back the way it is right now. Then come back, put the turbo in, put the intake on, slash valve cover, and then start coming back up with it. So I'll, I'll try to make a few more videos of this truck and, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's helping anybody, but it's kind of interesting. Most people don't see a 6.7 tour this far apart without the cab up in here, but it can be done. And always, guys, please like, subscribe, and just comment below. Just tell me, <clears throat> you know, make some conversation down there because I like to know that these are at least helping somebody or, or um, you know, doing something that I'm not just out here talking and holding the phone looking like an idiot for no reason because like i said i don't make any money off these things i i don't know how uh, if anybody does you know comment below and tell me because i guess if i'm doing this i might as well make money right but um you know i just i've never looked that far into it a mosquito so i'm just trying to give people some good information or at least a uh an idea of how stuff looks in some of these trucks so if you're going out there to tackle a job on your personal 67 60 64 um, you'll you'll have a good idea of kind of what you're looking at so you know like comment subscribe guys you know it see ya